Hey, 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 what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Adventure with Roger. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, don't forget to pound on that like, subscribe button and leave a comment for me to let me know what you're thinking. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a rant on NFTs, cryptocurrency, and how it's affecting the gaming culture and how it's affecting culture in general. NFTs are the hottest tamale on the block right now. And I'm not talking about your best friend's sister, guys. <laughs> I'm talking about non-fungible tokens, aka NFTs. That's right, everybody. NFTs are nothing if not confusing to everybody because, let's face it, not everybody's into the crypto scene. Not everybody knows what NFTs are. Today, I'm going to be getting down into the nitty gritty on what NFTs are, kind of how they work, and some of the stuff that goes along with NFTs and do we think that they, they, they are going to be good for society, a bad thing, especially in the gaming culture, because that's what this channel is all about is gaming. So let's start to get into it a little bit. So to start off, I want to start by asking all of you a question. And th this question I'm going to get back to at the end of the video. And that question is, why do I personally need NFTs in my life? Now this is a question that's going to be different for everybody, but just remember at the end of the video, I'm going to ask the question again, and hopefully you guys will have an answer to it. Okay, let's talk about the word fungible, because non-fungible token, NFT, what does it really mean? Okay, so the basics of fungible mean the ability of a good or an asset to be interchangeable with another good or uh, individual asset of the same type. So assets that are fungible, are the best kind of assets to use in commerce. Uh, for a really good example of the fungible asset, you know, some would say gold is a really good uh, fungible asset. Some say currency like dollar bills, but some currencies in other countries are worth more than others. And that becomes kind of a weird thing there. So one might not be fungible with another. In some countries, they don't even have access to all the same currencies, so that might not be fungible. But a gold nugget could be a fungible asset with another gold nugget of the exact same size, color, shape, carrot, and all that stuff. Let's just say that if you had a dollar bill and someone gave you four quarters, though that is an example of a fungible asset. One can be given for the other. Now what happens when you have a non-fungible? Let's say for instance, I have this golden pocket watch that was handed down by my grandfather and Abraham Lincoln gave him that pocket watch and it's made out of 21 karat gold and it's basically like irreplaceable, you know? And let's say that some other guy comes up to you and he has uh, a gigantic gold nugget that weighs the exact same amount of gold as that pocket watch, well, it doesn't have the history with it, does it? It wasn't crafted into a pocket watch. That's an example of a non-fungible transaction because one thing is not the same as the other, so it's non-fungible. That's the easiest way of telling the difference between the two. Let's say one guy has a 1991 red Corvette and this guy has a 1991 red Corvette. Well, one Corvette in the past maybe was in an accident. Maybe this red Corvette has 100,000 miles on it. Maybe this Corvette has 10,000 miles on it. They are not worth the same thing. Now the gasoline that's in those cars, that is a fungible asset, isn't it? Because this gallon of gasoline is worth the same uh, amount as this gallon of gasoline. So that's what fungible and non-fungible that's what they're talking about here. Okay guys, so what are some more examples of non-fungible assets? Probably some of the biggest ones that we say every day on an everyday basis. We already kind of went over cars, then we got real estate, and probably one of the biggest ones out there right now is art. So today I want to go over why buying NFTs in 2022 is such a huge gray area and why it's a little bit dangerous and why everybody and their mom is trying to get involved in this tech. Even Facebook changed their name to Meta. I mean, everybody's trying to get involved in this. They all want to be the first one out there, the first one ahead of the curve. And it's getting, a, frankly, a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? But we're going to talk about all this and I'm going to 
give you guys some great info so you might want to grab like a pen a piece of paper something like that and let's face it knowledge and staying knowledgeable and understanding this stuff is the key the tech and staying on top of these things and to in the world, crazy world that we live in right now all right guys so nft we know what the n and the f stands for it stands for non-fungible what does the t stand for well the t stands for token so the tokens are a digital certificate stored on the blockchain in the exact same manner that your favorite cryptocurrencies are stored on the blockchain chain nfts work the same way so an nft is a digital asset that's publicly verifiable now i know what you're going to say roger what in the world does that mean well i'm going to explain it to you right now guys here's a brief description of how the whole thing works let's say you buy some cryptocurrency you know you buy a thousand dollars worth of shiba inu or a thousand dollars worth of polygon or a thousand dollars worth of ether or whatever your favorite cryptocurrency is that transaction then gets sent all over to the world to all these different nodes and it's encrypted heavily encrypted which means guys that in order for you to have proof of your transaction buying that cryptocurrency someone has to data mine that those that information out of those nodes de-encrypt it unencrypt it whatever however you want to say it then that information is put into the blockchain and this is where the term crypto mining actually comes from guys it's just a bunch of computers decrypting all this encrypted information out of these nodes then those people get paid in the cryptocurrency that the transaction was decrypted from you know what i'm saying now there's huge companies all over the world data mining this information 24 Four hours a day seven days a week non-stop and this takes a gigantic amount of resources mainly power electricity it's huge it's highly controversial guys and when i say highly i'm talking with the capital h there's governments banning this data mining all over the world in different countries because it takes such a huge amount of resources and some of these gigantic corporate data miners are using things like coal mines and uh, terrible forms of uh, power to decrypt this information some of this stuff has been regulated upon and it has gotten better but here's the kicker guys you yourself can also data mine your neighbor can data mine as you were driving home the other day that zit factory 15 year old kid down the block that flipped you off as you were driving by he's in his parents basement with 15 computers data mining all day all night long his parents have a fifteen thousand dollar electric bill but you know what they don't really care because at the end of the year he slips them a couple of bitcoin and as everybody knows bitcoin right now is worth anywhere between 30 and sixty thousand dollars per bitcoin and they're sitting in tahiti three months out of the year going man i really hope my son doesn't burn the house down but hey what the heck i'm gonna sit my mai tais all right guys now that your crypto has been bought and it's done being mined and unraveled decoded solved cracked broken decrypted whatever else you choose to call it now it's finally added to the blockchain there's a bit more to it yes but that is basically the gist of it. Now that we've covered all that, guys, if you have any other questions, the cryptocurrency community, NFT community, is happy to answer any and all of your questions. If you have some, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer whatever questions you might have. So that being said, let's go ahead and move on. Let's start talking a little bit more about NFTs now again. Why would you pay $1, $300, a thousand dollars a million dollars for something you could say maybe just pull out your android or your iphone and take a picture of something and say okay i got the picture now i can enjoy it why do i need an nft for that i get it that's a great question let's talk about that a little bit more let's talk about ownership let's talk about hobbies and let's talk about status. These are all three things people care about. They might say that they don't care about these things, but let's face it, 
Everybody cares about these things. Let's face it guys, people don't buy a Ferrari so they can drive it up and down the driveway. They want to take it out. They want to be seen in this awesome red machine that sounds like no other car out there. People don't buy a Rolex to tell the time. They buy a Rolex because they want to stick it on their arm and they want to say, hey, look what I got. I did that. I bought this thing. Check me out. I got a, I got this fancy Rolex. People don't buy it because they just want to know when it's lunchtime. They basically want to say, hey, look at me. Me and the captain have been making it happen. You know what I'm saying? And by that note, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Let's face it, guys. More and more people these days are turning to an online world. We buy groceries online. We update our licenses and our tags for our vehicles online. We do our taxes online. We do social media online. We have our friends online. And now a lot of us want to say, hey, look at me and check this out and look what I got online the world is definitely changing guys and it's debatable whether if it's changing for the better or not a lot of people disagree in the direction that nfts and cryptocurrency are taking the world and on the other side of the platform you got people who don't like the government they like a, a currency that's for the people by the people and regulated by the people and that is the heart and soul of what cryptocurrency is for but NFTs, there's a lot of gray area involved. Let's face it, guys. The digital world, the metaverse, whatever you want to call it, is coming to a computer near you, whether you like it or not. So do you want to be updated on what it's all about? You want to stay on top of these things because, like I said, whether you like it or not, it's going to come. This is why you see so many people up there, out there on social media and so many other places updating their profile pictures with these crappy little pixel animated arts and all this stuff because it's kind of like a status thing. People want that status. They want to say, hey, look at me. I'm into this type of thing. I like this crappy little nft artwork and i want to be a part of it and that's why they pay crazy amounts of money for these crappy little digital artworks um you know let's face it if the artwork was better maybe people would buy the nicer artwork but right now it's easy for people to pump out all kinds of these crappy little pieces of artwork and, and people are paying for them and, and they're happy about it we're going to get into that a little bit more but first, let's change gears for just a minute and let's talk about things that have happened in the past. I want you to think about some stuff maybe you have hiding around the house, maybe in the closet. Maybe you have Pokemon cards, Magic the Gathering cards, stuff like that sitting in corners of your house or deep in the closet. And maybe you forgot about them for years, but you're still hanging on to them. And let's face it, these are tangible items that are now worth thousands of dollars, some of these cards tens of thousands of dollars if you know what you're looking at or what you're looking for. Just like these cards and many other things, including sports cards, people are now collecting NFTs to trade back and forth, sell for profit, or maybe just collect. But instead of just paying $3.99 for a pack of Pokemon cards, people are now paying maybe 0.34 Ether or 0.40 ether now one ether right now on the market um, is worth anywhere from three to four thousand dollars so 0.34 ether is right around thousand dollars and that is the base minimum of what many of these nfts are selling for now i don't know what neighborhood you live in or where you come from frankly if you're wealthy more power to you i'm really happy for you but the neighborhood i come from People don't go around dropping $1,000 or $3,000 on a Matchbox car, am I right? Normal people can't afford these type of things. This is definitely a status type purchase. So far in my research, I found two major types of people who are investing in NFTs. We have the people that like the online communities. They got sucked up into the hype situation of the whole thing. They're communicating with these people day in and day out. And they think it's a cool thing to do and a good idea to purchase one of these F10 NFTs as a collectible. Because they either believe in the project or they just enjoy being a part of the community and they want to own one of these NFTs. Now the second type of individual 
is the more worrisome kind of individual to me. And these are the people that purchase the NFTs with the sole idea of turning around and trading them or uh, selling them off to other individuals for a higher market value, so to speak. And it's not up to me to judge these people because if I buy a Pokemon card with the, with the idea that I want to hold on to it for a little while and resell it, or if it's a car, or I mean, this is the thing people do. They buy things every day to resell them and NFTs are no different. Now I'm not here to tell you today which NFTs are worth a lot of money and which NFTs aren't. You're gonna have to do your own research. I'm no market advisor or, or, or advisor for get rich quick schemes or anything like that. I just enjoy sharing information. Everything I talk about is my opinion, guys. But I do like to keep people informed in things that interest me personally. So with that being said, I personally think that the NFT thing is pretty cool. But, and this is a big but, I think that 99% or close to it of all NFTs out there right now are an utter and complete scam. I mean, most of them serve no purpose. They're ugly and pretty much are just a huge money grab for individuals trying to take people's money. And I get it. It's a huge draw. We're talking about thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars that people are paying for a tiny little piece of digital artwork. And to be frank with you, it's a little bit troublesome. Now it's no secret how I feel about NFTs. I've made videos about this in the past. And to be honest with you, I have compared NFTs to pogs. Now, I don't know if you remember pogs. This might be a little bit before some of your time, but kind of in the nineties, pogs were a thing. And they were these little round pieces of cardboard, maybe a little round little, just round little pogs. And they were like a game where you'd throw them down on the ground and you tried to knock over another pog. And anyways, people collected the crap out of these things. And there was all these manufacturers of pogs and pogs had pictures of everything you could possibly think of. They had pictures of Spider-Man and suit. All the superheroes were out there, uh, artwork, uh, comic book covers, anything that they thought they could sell pogs, the kids, even some grown-ups got involved and spent thousands of dollars on Pogs. And this was a total fad. I mean, fad. It went in and out the window within like two or three years. People had all these Pogs. No one played Pogs after that. Nobody cared. It was just a thing that came by and flew by in the nighttime. And it was over before it even began. But nevertheless, all these manufacturers... They didn't ask Marvel if they could use Spider-Man's face on a pog. They didn't get copyright assurance or, or, or any kind of approval to use any of the things that they put on pogs. They just pumped them out as fast as they possibly could and it was over. And before you, people tried to sue each other over using this, that, and the other uh, on pogs, the companies went out of business and no one could sue anybody at this point. And this totally reminds me of what's going on today with NFTs. NFTs are exactly the same as Pogs nowadays. You have people making NFTs about music, selling other people's copyrighted music on a website. And just because they attach an NFT to it, they think that they're not gonna get sued by the artist. <laughs> We got people making NFTs of sports media, pictures of all-stars, uh, pictures of Michael Jordan, every athlete you can think of, NFTs about animals, NFTs about monkeys and frogs, and they're selling NFTs of plots of land in real life, and it's just so crazy. There are people making NFTs for anything and anything that they think people will be stupid enough to spend their money on they are going to make an NFT about it and they are going to try to sell it to the unsuspecting public, picturing it as you are going to own this item when in realization you are just buying a picture of something that was scanned into a tiny little digital space 
and people are spending money on it because they think it might be worth something to somebody else. I've even found scam artists trying to sell NFTs of pictures of land on an island somewhere in the Bahamas that they don't even own the land. They don't even own the island. And they're selling, trying to sell NFTs to people of these plots of land that they plan on developing in the future. First, they don't own the land. They don't have the money to develop it. Uh, they're planning on putting casinos in these in these places of land. They and and gambling is outlawed in that particular country. It's just completely insanity. Okay, this is a very important point that I need to mention right now. There are lots of companies out there trying to develop a way for the blockchain to hold this type of information. But as of yet, it doesn't really exist. But I will explain and clarify what I'm talking about. When you buy an NFT and it's done properly, that information is encrypted, sent out to the nodes, and then someone data mines it, uh, puts it onto the blockchain, and then you have proof of that purchase that you made of the NFT. But the information that's not put on there is an actual picture of what you actually bought. Maybe there's proof of purchase, maybe there's a date on there with a description of what you bought, but the actual picture or the the information of what, what you bought is not put on the blockchain. And this is one of the hugest gray areas that you can get. So let's say you buy a picture that is an original piece of artwork and you own that NFT. Well, you have proof of purchase because it's on the blockchain. Someone decrypted it and put it up there on the blockchain for you. And you have maybe the date and the time of the purchase and a description of it. But the actual picture of what you bought is not up there. Now, if that has changed in the near something here that I don't know about, please let me know in the comments because that'd be huge. But as of right now, it's not on there. Now, I also want you to consider that whenever you buy an NFT, you're not actually buying something that's tangible. You're not buying a Pokemon card. You can't take it home with you. You can't put it in your pocket. You can pull it up on your computer. You can show it to your kids. Maybe you can trade it to somebody else that's into the same type of thing you're into over your computer, but there's never actually gonna be a physical, tangible thing that you can hold in your hand. I just like to give a, a quick example of what I'm talking about here. Let's say you buy a piece of artwork in real life. You buy a Rembrandt. You spend a million dollars on it. You take it home, you scan it. You then put it on a website and sell it as an NFT. You get enough hype around the project because it's a Rembrandt, but someone pays you five ether for this digitalized picture of a Rembrandt that you own. Now five ether, well, one ether right now is going for over $3,000. So you made somewhere in ballpark of 15 to $17,000 off this NFT. The person that bought the NFT from you has proof of purchase. They have maybe the date and time that they bought it from you. Maybe you send them a digital picture of the scan and say, here's your NFT. What they don't actually have is a picture of what they actually bought unless you send it to them. And then who's to say, tomorrow you don't just scan it again and sell it to somebody else and say well now there's two of them out there in the world there's nothing to keep you from doing that what i'd like to mention here is that in no way do they have any rights to the original picture you're not going to then send them the million dollar rembrandt through the mail and say hey thanks for purchasing that nft it was nice doing business with you they're never going to see that picture in real life they're never going to have anything tangible that they can hold in their hands. As a matter of fact, maybe they forget to back up their files on their computer and one day their computer explodes. They have no proof that they ever even bought that NFT from you anymore. That's quite the dilemma, wouldn't you say? This is exactly what's happening with most NFT projects out there right now. The public advertisement is huge. The hype is huge. Right now, everybody's talking about NFTs. They're exciting. They're 
new, they're refreshing, but so were Pogs in the 90s. And those are sitting in your closet. Look guys, I'm well aware that this is a bit of a rant. Am I right? Let's face it. But this kind of stuff needs to be examined because this is the world that we now live in. This stuff needs to be explained and talked about. And let's face it guys, whether we like the concept or not, this is happening. It's going to be around. It's going to continue to be around. There's going to be more and more of this stuff. And with that, we want to be responsible. We want to be understanding. And we need to understand this because whether we like it or not, it's going to be a part of our future. This is crazy, guys. I am literally like 45 minutes into recording this video. I'm not going to keep it that long. Obviously, I'm going to edit it. But I still have pages and pages of stuff I want to talk about on this. But I'm not going to be able to do it in this video, so I'll go ahead and make another one in the near future. I just want to say thank you so much for being with me here today and listening to me rant on about NFTs, how they're going to affect us, the gaming community, and all this different stuff. Before I end it though, I want to again ask you the question, why do I personally need to buy NFTs. I hope you have a little bit more of a, a uh, idea how this affects you now than you did at the beginning of this video. Do me a favor, hit that like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I have absolutely zero faith that I'm ever going to get approved by YouTube or AdSense to monetize this channel, so do me a favor, check out the Patreon, or leave me a donation in PayPal if you feel up to it. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care of yourself, everybody.